If you have just five bucks in your pocket right now, let me show you how to invest it. Honest truth, don't hate me for this, but don't invest it. When you're low on cash, you're better off just saving it in a high yield savings account in case of emergency or throwing it towards some high interest debt if you have any. Meanwhile, find ways to reduce your expenses and make more money. That's going to make more cash pile up every month. Once you've got a few months of expenses saved and all your debts taken care of, you're ready to start investing. Did you know your debt is actually an amazing investment opportunity? Let's say you have a loan at 6% APR. If you have extra money left after paying your bills every month, what should you do with it? You could invest the money in the stock market and hope to make 10% per year, but then you'd have to pay taxes on the gains. Or you could shovel the money into your loan, eliminating future interest. You'd be making a guaranteed 6% return tax-free. The choice is yours, but if I could earn a guaranteed 6% return on my money, I'd take it in a heartbeat. Some people say paying extra on your mortgage is mathematically wrong, because you can make more than the interest you're saving by investing. Other people say you should pay off your mortgage as soon as possible. Neither of those statements are true, though. Early mortgage payoff is a low-risk, low-reward move. Investing extra instead comes with higher risk and higher potential rewards. It's a risk-reward trade-off, and it's just a personal choice, nothing more. Here's five ways to get to a million dollars with a one-time investment. This first one's tough, but stay with me. A one-time investment of $100,000 into the U.S. stock market in 1995 would be a million bucks today. 10,000 invested in 1980 would be a million bucks today. $1,000 invested in 1954 would be a million bucks today. Just a hundred bucks in 1926 gives you a million dollars today. And 10 bucks invested in 1898 gives you 1 million today. Active and passive investment options. With active real estate investing, you buy a house and rent it out. That means you might have to fix the toilet from time to time. We do this kind of by accident because we still own the old house we used to live in. Active stock investing involves guessing which stocks you think are going to do better than others. We don't do it at all. You can buy shares of multiple properties through REITs. We don't do this because we already have enough real estate exposure as it is. Our favorite investments are passive stock market index funds. We don't have to think about them and they just steadily make us richer over the long run. Pop quiz for investors. What's the difference between a mutual fund, an ETF, and an index fund? Mutual funds have five character ticker symbols and trade at the end of each day. ETFs have shorter ticker symbols and trade on stock exchanges throughout the day. Index funds passively track a list of securities called an index. Non-index funds are actively managed by an expensive professional trader. Some mutual funds are index funds, and others are not. Some ETFs are index funds, and others are not. All these things are baskets of securities that make your life easier. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to actually buy one of these index funds that we're always going on about. First off, we need to transfer some money from our checking account to our brokerage account. I'm gonna do a thousand bucks and it's telling me the funds will be available immediately. Next up, I'm gonna to go to trade, stocks, and ETFs. I'm gonna buy VTI, which is a total US stock market index fund. The current price is $223 and I'm gonna set a limit order at $224, slightly above the current market price to make sure the order goes through. I can afford four shares at that price with $1,000, and I'm not gonna set a time limit on the order, it's good till canceled. When I review the order, I make sure there's no trade commission and everything else looks right. My order was filled and you can see I didn't have to pay that full limit price, it just places the order at the current market price up to that limit amount. Now go make sure you have automatic dividend reinvestment turned on. Hey, I just want to clear up a little investing lingo mistake that I hear people make all the time, and I'm actually guilty of this one too. You hear people say a stock is skyrocketing or a stock is crashing, but that's not really accurate. You can say a stock's price rose or dropped past tense, and that's fine. But if you say a stock's price is increasing, that kind of implies that the time to buy is right now because it's going to go up higher, right? But even if the chart's going up, nobody really knows what's going to happen next. So just keep that in mind. Do you plan your finances around life goals? Do you follow a long-term buy and hold strategy? Do you think holistically about your investments? Do you place fewer trades and avoid trying to beat the market? Then congratulations, you invest like a girl. Following these strategies, women investors outperform men on average according to a study by Fidelity. So don't get caught up in the hype. Instead, consider following a simple, consistent investment plan. No matter who you are, it's okay to invest like a girl. Learn how at tripofalifestyle.com. Here are five investment choices and their risk reward profiles. Stocks are high risk and high return. Over the long run, they've returned about 10 to 11% per year before inflation. Bonds are a lower risk option that pay a lot less. Real estate is high risk and high return, assuming you're renting it out. Most of the return comes from rent, not appreciation. 
Gold is pretty volatile, with a historical return that's only kept pace with inflation. It's anyone's guess what Bitcoin will do in the short term, but in the very long run, I kind of doubt it can do any better than that. When we were 25, we paid cash for our first home. It was a modest 3-2 condo in our college town for $71,000. We lived there ourselves for several years, saving us on rent. We also had a couple of friends as roomies for a few months. During the times we haven't lived there, we've rented it out. And of course, there have been tons of expenses like taxes, insurance, condo dues, and maintenance. Zillow says it's worth over 131 k now, but I like to discount that to be conservative. Our total return's been pretty strong, though. How different investments make you money? 32nd edition. Companies do productive stuff, like growing food and making smartphones. So when you own their stock, you get a portion of those profits forever. If you buy a house and rent it out, you get paid for providing someone with shelter. When you lend money through bonds, you provide capital to help other people run businesses, and you earn interest on those loans. Stagnant assets, like gold and Bitcoin, don't actually do anything, so holding them only makes you a profit if you can sell them for more later. We need to talk about something called results-oriented investing. It's where you judge an investment by its results, not its validity. Let's say one of your friends really wants you to invest in an S&P 500 index fund, and your other friend really wants you to invest in Pokemon cards. And let's say one year later, the S&P 500 is down 20% and Pokemon cards are up 50%. That doesn't mean that Pokemon cards are a better investment than stocks. So think about that the next time a crypto guru tries to sell you on their results. Okay, so you've probably heard you're supposed to keep some of your investments in stocks and the rest in less risky bonds. And that makes some sense, but if you have any debt of any kind, there might be a better alternative. For example, if you have a student loan at 6% APR, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to buy a US Treasury bond paying 2% interest. Paying off the loan gives you an effective 6% return, guaranteed. So consider becoming debt-free before buying any bonds. To become a billionaire from a middle class job, what would you have to do? Start working at age 20 and invest $100 into the stock market every day until you're 96 years old. That's 76 years. If the market returned exactly what it did the last 76 years, you'd lay on your deathbed with over a billion dollars. It's not something I'd recommend doing, it actually sounds kind of terrible, but damn, that's more doable than I thought.